Hey everybody, it's Gomladax, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of Murders at Karlov Manor. Without further ado, let's get into the draft, where we're going to be taking the biggest and best reason to be in black in this format, and that is Vein Ripper. Triple black and three for a 6-5 flyer, with a ward ability that forces whoever targets it to sacrifice a creature, and whenever any creature dies, your opponent loses two life and you gain two life busted busted card we're really happy to start with that the only thing i'm not happy about is that black is my least favorite color in this format but when you have such a powerful reason to be there it is still perfectly playable so start with a vein ripper here and go from there if this weren't in the pack honestly i'd probably take a common like inside source for going wide really early or a shock for really cheap removal both are really nice options Pick two now, we've got a pretty easy follow-up with Extract a Confession, one of Black's better commons. It's just a two-mana way to make your opponent sack a creature, and later in the game when you've got six evidence, you make sure that the creature they're sacrificing is the biggest creature they have, so that's a solid choice. We could also take a Flourishing Bloomkin, heading into green here, go for some green-black nonsense. This is a great card to flip up later. Pick up two forests, put one into play tap, the other into your hand, really good ramp there. And it's a decently beefy creature once you do flip it. At least like a 4-4 on four average, even in a two-color deck. I think these are the best options. I'll actually go for the Bloomkin here. Maybe heading into some green-black nonsense today. Pack one, pick number three. Uh, Exit Specialist is a fantastic blue uncommon. It's a great card to flip up, being able to bounce whatever creature you want. And it leaves behind a nice, somewhat hard-to-block creature. So I like that a lot. But I also enjoy Repulsive Mutation. Not because I've played it and it's been super well for me, but... It has, uh, it has blown me out once before, and it looked pretty powerful there. Like, if this is the last card in your hand, you just, like, counter your opponent's last spell and turn one of your creatures into a win condition, which is pretty big game. So I think this card is actually pretty good. So we might roll with that. That or the Specialist, I think, are the best two cards. I guess the Specialist is a little bit more flexible because we don't have to be in a specific two-color per for that. We could go blue-green or black-blue. I guess I'll take Specialist still. But I did, did want to mention that uh, that Uncommon is actually pretty good. Pick four. This pack's really strong. Wow. We've got an Inside Source out of white. Again, an excellent common for getting a wide board state. Coerce to kill for blue-black. This is a mind control effect where you take your opponent's best threat and you use it against them. We've got a Long Goodbye here for just really cheap removal in black. And we've got a Kroos and Tusker, which is excellent fixing. It's actually really nice in this format. Pick up whatever land you need to put it into your hand, draw a card, and have seven evidence in your graveyard for collect evidence. Tusker's like super sweet, and you're like never going to get to play with it. Not that often because it's on the list, but I imagine Coerce to Kill is still strong enough to have to take that over the Tusker. Which is a little sad, because it'd be really cool to play with some we don't get to play with that often. Pick five, we've got a bunch of perfectly reasonable options. The cheap counterspell from Reasonable Doubt, the great cheap creature for green-black with Crawl Whipcracker, and the Culvert Ambusher, a fine card for forcing a bad block. Fine, beefy disguise creature. I think Whipcracker is the best of these cards, but it's also the most restrictive, going specifically into green-black, and it's not super splashable, because you do want to try to jam this out early. Get the most of it being a 2-mana 3-2. I think it's enough better that we just take that. Super good for that cheap of a cost. Now we get to take Extract a Confession here. Pretty happy with that. Pick number 7. Polygraph Orb is a repeatable way to collect evidence if you're trying to do the combo deck that wants you to keep exiling cards from your grave. You're trying to use Chalk Outline. You're trying to use the um, Insidious Bloom or whatever that makes plants every time you do it. It's pretty narrow, because I think that's the only time it's any good, so I'd probably still rather just take the Vitugazi Inspector, a nice little blocker. That's super good with the evidence engrave. But Orb is certainly an option. I'll take the Inspector, though. Pick number eight. Pretty happy to take Topiary Panther for some splashing around here. We could be black, green, splash, blue, it looks like right now. Because Specialist is splashable, since we can always disguise it face down. Coerce to kill is splashable because it's always going to be good even if we don't hit the mana for it till really late in the game. So yeah, green, black, splash, blue is looking pretty sweet as a, a game plan here. Pick nine, I'll take scene of the crime. 
Not really going to run it unless we don't end up with a lot of good fixing, because if your opponent has any main deck artifact removal, them being able to blow up on your lands is a huge liability. Pick 10. I guess we take a Mortipede just in case we get a ton of those graveyard combos, but it's unlikely to make it in. Pick 11. There's a Gravestone Strider, which is one of those graveyard combos and a way to help splash our blue. I don't think I'm going to be really missing out on a second V2 Gauzy Inspector, so I'll take Case of the Shattered Pact, like, just in case we open up, like, niv -Mizzet or get past multiple niv or something, we can try to do the five-color deck. Probably pretty unlikely, but maybe. Pack two, pick one, we've opened up an insanely red pack. And most of the cards here aren't even good anyway. The best cards are Galvanize and Not on My Watch for removal. Slice from the Shadows is more mediocre removal, but at least it's on color. And there's a solid green combat trick with fanatical strength. Not that I think we're going to be a super combat tricky kind of deck. Guess we just take Slice, even though fanatical strength is better in a vacuum. This is a pretty weird pack, but yeah, the best cards are just red and white. Galvanize, not on my watch, on the job. So sad pack for us. Those are the only three colors we're... Or sorry, the only two colors we're not playing. All right, pack two, pick two. Glint Weaver is a super fine finisher. So seven mana for a six six reach at worst. Seven mana six six reach and you gain six life. But you can also spread those counters around wherever you need, which is really nice and flexible. So I do like Glint Weaver a lot. Works quite well with our uh, Flourishing Bloomkin ramping up into it. I think I'll take the Glint Weaver. Coveted Falcon is fine, too. Pretty easy to just, like, draw a card off of this. You just flip it up, give your opponent one of your lands, and then attack, get the land back, and draw a card. Yeah. I don't know, it's it's just a weird design. Like, I feel like the card is just a good card that you should run, but I just don't like to draft it because I don't like the design, it's just weird. Pack two, pick three, really great cheap removal with hard-hitting question. You have to have a creature on board to use this, but it is super efficient. Or there's surveillance monitor. Great way to get uh, some blockers down, and if you have other ways to collect evidence, it gets really, really good. That'd be a pretty reasonable splash for this deck. Hard-hitting question is just great off of our main colors, though, so I think I'll still roll with that. Pick number four now. Ooh. Dusk Mantle's on the list? That's pretty sweet. I don't think we can afford to run a colorless land, but that's a cool card. Play a Deduce here for great value off the splash, or a Crocodile to flip up. Maybe Sample Collector, but that's for a more aggressive deck that can fill the grave well. Hard for it to be terrible, though, because, like, off one attack, it's a 3-4 rolling in. I don't know, I guess I'll take Sample Collector. Not, like, a super wild card, not a super wild pack, but seems fine. Another hard-hitting question would be fine here, but I think I'm going to go for the Nervous Gardener. Really excellent fixing. It's a nice two-for-one. If you can get this to trade into an opposing disguise creature, you're getting a great deal there, because you're getting a land and trading off with their card instead of just... One for one trading off with their card, so big fan of the gardener for some fixing. Pick number six, triple green is gonna be difficult. Yeah, I mean the card seems fine, but not good enough for how difficult it is to cast, so I'd rather just take like a fester leech here for filling the grave or something. Could be cute. Pick seven. Unscrupulous agent is fine. Drop it, get your one for one where you make them get a card out of their hand and then you chump with it and have a creature in your grave to collect some evidence later. Fine card. Rebel Belt Maverick's actually one of the better creatures for getting those Insidious Roots decks to operate because it's a cheap creature that can put more creatures in your grave and get exiled from your grave pretty quickly. So actually, I'll take one here over Public Thoroughfare, mainly. It's fine for the Collect Evidence decks. 
I don't think we run in case we didn't end up going for any like three color nonsense. Yeah, this deck looks fine. I don't think we ended up with anything super exciting here outside of the Vein Ripper, but the Vein Ripper is quite exciting. So we're just trying to survive, trade some creatures off, and then resolve the Vein Ripper to win. Very basic little strategy here. But I think it's our first black deck in quite some time. So at least there's that. A little bit of variety. Alright, pack three. Pick number one. Taste is a pretty great rare. We could try to splash in off of Gravestone Strider Topiary Panther stuff. Um, Nervous Gardener. Splashing into a fourth color is slightly difficult. I think... If a killer among us weren't in this pack, I think Taste is definitely strong enough to take and try to splash that as well, but a killer among us is honestly not that much weaker than Tasa. This card's a 5-mana 4-4 four, four that comes with two one ones as well. It's just really, really good, and it's also incredibly easy for this deck to cast. There's just, like, no cost to running this. So I think we have to go a killer among us, but if it weren't here, I'd absolutely, I think, try to roll in and, uh, and use that Tasa. so... A little sad. But we gotta just go for a killer among us. Now we've got a Loxit on Eavesdropper. Nice 4-mana 3-3 three, three trade-off with this and leave your clue behind for great value. Excellent card. Pack 3, pick 3. I like Vengeful Creeper a lot. I also like Extract a Confession and the Underground Mortuary. Really like having that beef to flip up with Vengeful Creeper and the main deck artifact enchantment removal it provides is nice too. Think I'm going for this. Yeah, our fixing isn't incredible, but I think Strider, Gardener, Panther is enough for just a blue splash here. We only need like one blue source, so I'm gonna go Creeper over Mortuary. Pick four. Mm, pretty much nothing here. I don't really want to run a double tap land like Public Thoroughfare. It hits the board tapped and you have to tap another card. That's pretty rough. I guess we can run like a one of Fairy Snoop or a one of Unauthorized Exit or something, but nothing exciting. I'll just take the Snoop. Pack three, pick five. Unscrupulous Agent is fine. Vengeful Creeper is fine. That is about it. I'll get another cheap little blocker. We'll grab Unscrupulous Agent. Get a chump in there. Pick six. Basically nothing. We can splash in Dramatic Accusation or we can just run Mind Rot. Neither of which I'm all that into. I'm just going to rare draft the Elegant Parlor. I don't love Rakish Scoundrel. It's just so much mana to flip. Alright, pick seven. Another Crawl Whipcracker or another Glint Weaver actually kind of sweet. I mean, I have Vi Vein Ripper, Glint Weaver, Coerce to Kill a Killer Among Us. I think I'm doing real good on finishers. I'm going to take another early creature with the Crawl Whipcracker. And this one is just super good against white aggro, because basically every white aggro deck in the format is throwing tokens out. Like, your worst case scenario is like, you play a 2-mana 3-2 Reach, which is still a good card. But against white decks, often the worst case scenario is like killing one of their clues, which is still fine. And the best case scenario is killing one of their 2-2s, two which is great. Alright, we're pretty low on non-creature spells. We will actually play a Bite Down on Crime in this deck. And we're pretty good. We're like really good at filling the graveyard with the evidence for this. So it should be fine. Should almost always be 2-mana if we need it to be. I'm not going to play Public Thoroughfare. We could take a Rope, I guess. Still pretty low on non-creature spells, so maybe we will, but... Like, probably not. <laughs> Good old Stromkirk Captain from the list. Showing up in the set with very few vampires. I guess Vayne Ripper's a vampire. I imagine. But that is not a reason to splash in the red vampire lord, so let's not do that. Alright, so we only need to cut four cards, which should be nice and simple here. We can just cut some of the 
just not that great blue splashes of smuggler and specialist specialist i might still keep in but definitely smuggler gets out of here i think we can just go for the one coerce to kill and run a single island and be pretty happy with our mana base that way so i'm gonna do that um and then i don't love rope in here i don't think we really need just some random equipment so i'll drop that then uh just cut another random creature i suppose um let's put the disguise cards here at three mana i mean how much do we have to go with mortipede because maybe it's just mortipede we have one two ways to collect evidence here three ways to collect evidence this exiles itself from grave and this exiles itself from grave so five cards to trigger the plus one plus oh. But it's still just a four mana three four the variety of the time. Or the majority of the time. So that should be maybe a cut. Or maybe Gravestone Strider. We've got a single blue card in this deck. Sure, there's Fairy Snoop, but we can flip that up for double black. So with a single blue source, um, a single blue land, that is, we have one, two... Three. Yeah, a single island is already three blue sources, even if we don't run a Gravestone Strider. This is probably kind of dumb, but I sort of like the idea of going in on Mortipede, because actually it is one, two, three, four, five, six, six ways to trigger it. No, that still seems pretty loose. Never mind. We'll just drop the Mortipede. Simplest cut we can make. So, yeah. We'll call it a deck here. Alright, here's look at our final deck list for today. We're on a green-black mid-range deck here, where if we're playing against something really controlly, we can try to be a little more aggressive with a couple cheap creatures, like some Whip Crackers for 2-mana 3-2s, a bunch of 3-mana 2-2s with a bunch of Disguise cards and stuff. And if we're playing against something really aggressive... Then we can sit on the defensive here, play all this stuff and a bunch of cheap removal, and then try to overwhelm them with value through the course of the game. Some two-for-ones like Eavesdropper, Fairy Snoop, uh, hitting the board, drawing us a card when they do, same with Nervous Gardener, and then some really big top end with Vein Ripper and Glint Weaver here, as well as like a Killer Among Us and Coerce to Kill to just be really good value plays. So a little bit of everything you want. In your mid rangey decks here, we've got removal, we've got top end finishers, we've got plenty of two for ones. Hopefully, our deck will play out fine and we won't get absolutely steamroll aggro curved out by Boros or controlled out of the game by other bigger, slower, splashier decks than us. But we'll see how it all pans out as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for game one with our opponent on the play. We have eight forests in the deck so i'm gonna keep this on the draw worst case scenario we get to do agent into a face down disguise card uh, but we did hit the green source immediately so we're good we also hit our one island so that is solid two just drop the agent here to curve out play gardener turn three rip an island out of their hand so they're mono blue for now, triple island in the opener. Blue black, it's gonna be. There's a face down. The bite down on crime for us. So that'll be good in a while. Not great yet. We don't have enough creatures on board to really um, kill anything. Plus, they don't have cards we really want to kill yet. Barbed Servitor. Okay, it's a pretty annoying one. They get to lose a life and draw a card every turn, or I get to lose some life every turn double blocking that. Um, I mean, it's indestructible, so I can't really bite down on Crime or anything. I could play a Gravestone Strider to set up the double block without losing a creature, because currently I have to double block with these two and lose my 1-1 one -one to stop them from uh, from drawing the card. Yeah, this is rough. This is probably the best kind of matchup for Barbed Servitor. It's pretty bad against aggro because they can just ignore it and just demolish you. But if it's a control mirror, I think the Servitor is actually not control. But like if it's a longer game, like a mid-range mirror, then that card's actually 
pretty nasty. Like, this does not look good for us. Have to take three damage a turn or let them draw a card every turn. I guess three damage a turn is really not bad. Like, imagine they just spent four mana and played a 3-2 flyer. We'd still just be taking three damage a turn. That's fine. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll talk myself down here. This is not that big of a deal yet. Um, we don't have our second green yet, do we? No. And we do need that for the Glint Weaver, so we'll grab that. Just in case Gravestone Strider dies, then we can still play the Glint Weaver without filtering any mana through it. Extract a Confession. Well, this kills the highest power creature, not the highest mana value creature, so I can't kill Servitor with that, even if I had the evidence. Alright, drop an Eavesdropper and pass. Obviously not attacking into the face down when they have five mana up. And it's just the fairy snoop. Well, none of our creatures would have attacked well into that anyway. Curious inquiry on the servitor. And I still have the combat trick to kill one of these, but now I have to take four instead of three. But now they basically draw two if it hits us. They lose one life, draw a card, and get a clue token. Okay. Well, I mean, I get completely demolished if they have instant speed removal here. Because they counter my bite down on crime. If they don't, though, trying to outrace them... By killing the Jaded Analyst so we can attack with everybody that has more than uh, one toughness is a game plan. I suppose I should draw a card first and see if we find anything better to do. Find a slice from the shadows. Well... I imagine that counts as something better to do, because now we kill the Servitor if they don't have a way to buff its toughness, which shouldn't really exist in blue-black. There's one blue card that makes its base stats a 4-3 until end of turn, so if they have exactly that, they can get me here. Okay, they do have the murder. I'm really glad I didn't bite down on crime then. They would have just murdered... I mean, I could have used it on Gravestone Strider so they wouldn't have a great murder target, but still. Well, I guess now I can just extract a confession and save Slice for something else. That seems reasonable. Sure. Let's do that. Now we're looking pretty chill. I am at 13, but Glintweaver's about to change that. The board state is already slightly in our favor. About to get even more so. They only have two cards in hand. Never mind. Guess it did really depend on what those two cards are, and the Interrogators is a really good one. A 5-6 that also draws them a card. Okay, well. Whipcracker's a good draw. So I get to get rid of their card draw. And I get to combat trick with Slice from the Shadows to kill the Interrogators. And they don't get to attack in the sky with Fairy Snoop. So yeah, like we wait a turn on Glint Weaver, but we just completely deal with Interrogators first. Unless they have their own instant speed removal. Sweet. That was an excellent turn for us. The Whipcracker on the top was premium. That was the Wagyu beef right there. Kind of want to have multiple four power creatures, so... Boop, boop. 
Sure. I'll do that. I guess they could actually double block the whip cracker pretty well here. I gotta wait till I bite down on crime then. Oops. I should have done that the other way around. Two on whip cracker, one on glint weaver. Oh no. Oops, I win. Cryptic coat. Can still try to outrace it, I guess. Oh boy. Yeah. It's a 3-2 unblockable ward 2. They can put it back in their hand, play another 3-2 unblockable ward 2 with all of this mana. If they hit land 7, they can just play the coat, pick it up. I guess they need 8 mana, but they could play the coat, pick it up, replay it in the same turn, get a 2-2 and a 3-2 unblockable every turn. I don't even know how helpful Bite Down on Crime is here and where we even use it in the first place. Yeah, the, the counters on this Glint Weaver are really in the wrong spot. Because now even if I bite down the 3-2, the they still double block Whipcracker. That stops a lot of damage there. Yeah. I mean, we still do it, I think. We might lose this game because I put the Glint Weaver counters in the wrong spot. Depends how close it ends up being. If I get absolutely steamrolled and they just have excellent Cryptic Coat hits, then we still would have lost, but making it so they couldn't trade with this Whipcracker would have been a massive deal. Oh nice, that was a Crocodile if we just got killed. Good stuff. They top deck surveillance monitor with the mana to do surveillance monitor plus cryptic coat. Okay. It's starting to look less likely that it mattered. I mean, I'd, I'd still have the 4 3 here. They would have just trumped instead, but then just completely locked out. Ooh. Maybe not. Maybe not. So we're going to draw a Coerce to kill, and then a Fairy Snoop to draw another card. Sure. They can kill a Glint Weaver if they double block with the face down and the Surveillance Monitor. Imagine I still attack him. I guess they could go face down 1-1 one, one, and 1-4 one, Snoop. That's 5 power. Okay, no, that's still, that's bad. God, this sucks. Freaking coat. Curious Cadaver. So when they sack clues, they bring them back from their grave to their hand. None of their creatures have abilities that actually work for me right now. But Surveillance Monitor would be the most likely one to have an ability that matters later. And I do think I want to trade one of the... Uh, take one of the three power creatures on their board. Kill Snoop and Cadaver if they try to kill Glint Weaver here. Sure. Probably should have just sent in um, the agent as well at this point. Put them to nine there. Good old cryptic coat being completely busted. Now there's just a complete wall. 
played my one blue spell. And I guess we find a topiary panther for a 6-5 trample, which is something. God, yeah, like they don't even have to just keep hitting me for three. They can just make two two twos a turn and I can never hit them again. I mean, obviously I can't just do all the math on how everything would have played out right now. If I had a bigger whip cracker, but things would have played much better. So that was a pretty bad punt for me of the ordering of the counters. Hello. I don't think they'd be dead yet if we had the counters elsewhere, but they'd probably be down to like six at least. Things would be so much better. Okay. Obviously, I need to hold up some amount of blockers. Definitely send in the Death Toucher. These deal one or two damage to them no matter what. So I think I only attack it with those. Because they're guaranteed to at least have a creature die. Like they do one or a creature dies and I deal two. Okay, cool. They're down to seven. Uh, please don't just like flip up a six power unblockable creature or something here off of the cloak. They are playing off the top. How big is your stupid unblockable creature? Three for now, down to eight. Yep, cloak a million blockers out. Projector inspector two. There's also a million attackers, and all we have is a land. Trump go to five. Take one, two, three. Go to two, and then kill me. This bounces, this bounces. Yeah, they can just bounce here and take zero, and I have one less blocker. They can bounce here, take zero, I have one less blocker. They can chump here, take one, two, three. So they take five total. One, two, three, four, five. Go to two life. They're at 2 life, I'm at 10, um, but I'm at 10 life and I've only killed one of their creatures. I'm at 10 life with 3 blockers up. Block, 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 take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? If I block the right face downs, I might not die. If this is anything bigger than a 2 2, I'm dead. Maybe, since I can't kill them anyway, I should hold back another blocker, like the Unscrupulous Agent, to make it a little more likely I, I don't die. Then I hit them for four, put them to three, which makes it so they aren't dead to a single vein ripper trigger like they would have been. Really tempting to send in one more creature to put them dead to one vein ripper trigger. I feel like it is slightly too risky though. Let's have four blockers up now. Let's, yeah, let's have the four blockers up. Alright, cool. The chump to go to ten. Put them to three. Yeah, if they can't deal with vein reaper. Vein Ripper 3 is still just dead next turn because the 1-1 one, one sending in all get in at least one. So I just attack with these three, they have to let them in. I actually could have attacked with one less creature, come to think of it. Because if they don't kill Vein Ripper, then obviously the Vein Ripper sends in and that deals at least two. So I only need to send in a single 1-1 one, one next turn. Yeah. I maybe just didn't even need to attack with any of them on the ground, but I think I should have held. Probably the perfect attack is just attack with one. One one on the ground. The one one not death touch, I imagine. 
There's the concession. Oh my god. All right. Well, a couple looser lines there that certainly could have went better. I think the the biggest punt, the worst line that we made was certainly um, where we spread the counters with the Glint Weaver. Our opponent had exactly like three power on board for a solid double block. Um, and we left the Whipcracker at 4-3 and made the Glint Weaver a 5-5. Five, five. 5-4 five, and a 4-4 four, four would have been much better on attacks, and we probably would have found a little extra damage, made that game a lot more in our favor by then. Um, but then also that final Vein Ripper attack. The the math there, just thinking around how much we would need on board if this doesn't die. Like, we, we really don't need much when we've got these 1-1s. One, so I don't even think I had to attack with anybody there. They could have just, like, attacking with the Vein Ripper just, like, locks in that they're just going to get drained for two. I guess Vein Ripper plus a 1 1 makes it so they have to chump Vein Ripper and we gain the two life. So I think Vein Ripper plus 1 1 is the best attack there. They have to have at least one creature dice uh, somewhere, like on the chump, to give us the two life. And then they still go down to five, which is still low enough to. Or not five, they would have went down to four, and four life is still low enough that we could go. Vein Ripper, that drains them for two and send in two 1-1s. One Those hit for one or two no matter what because of this ability. Yeah, we could have found better attacks there, but that's a much more narrow thing. Like, that's specifically just the Vein Ripper math problems. The, the plus and plus one counter thing, though, is just combat math of, like, how do the blockers line up? That was really loose. Ooh, stressful game. Really didn't think we were getting past the, the cloak there. But... We found our best bomb rare and outbombed them very slightly in the end at 1 0 heading into game two. Here we are for game two, starting off with a bunch of one and two mana nonsense. I mean, that's what you want in your opening hand. I don't really have win conditions or anything, but just jam all this stuff out until we draw into our big cards. Fine way to start a game. Playing against Black White with a turn two Market Watch Phantom. Fantastic card. But a Vitu Gazi Inspector can block that forever. <laughs> I was about to say, I was going to say, that is the loosest block I've ever seen, because I can just buff this up. Um, I'll just get the mill, get the free mill here. Drop a Gravestone Strider. Ooh, wow, we really have the evidence. Glint Weaver Fairy Snoop here. Could just play a 2-4 Inspector then. I don't mind that at all. Let's do it. Wojek Investigator. Ah, it's awkward because I can't kill that with Extract because it's the same size as the Phantom. I guess if I get the Maverick Engrave, I could put a counter on it to make it bigger and then kill it with Extract. Kind of cute. I don't imagine they're going to double block the Leech here. I don't imagine they're going to block the Leech with Investigator, period, if I send in. But I can I can threaten the trick here. If they do block the, le the leech with just Investigator, it's pretty bad for me. If they double block, it's fine. I trade into the Phantom. And that makes it so we can extract the Investigator next turn, maybe. Yeah, I mean, the Strider and the Maverick are not that impactful spells to play here, so it's okay if I have to just soak all my mana up into not trading into Investigator. Or not getting killed by Investigator is what I mean. Okay, cool. Do I want to just hit them for five? Kind of. Sure. I only need... Oh my god, I milled Vein Ripper. R.I.P. That is an incredible draw. Play that turn 5 off of the Strider. This is maybe a little greedy, but I'm going to play it a little safe and keep the Nervous Gardener in case the Strider gets killed then I can still get to the Coerce to kill. Slimy Dual Leech. Plus one plus zero Death Touch every turn? Sure. Sure. Okay. 
man, everything they play is just going to be a 2-4. It's all going to be two power creatures, so our Extracted Confession just never does anything better. So I guess we're probably playing Extract and Strider then. Yeah, I'm just going to just extract the Phantom away, I guess. Keep them off of the Investigator clues by having uh, less cards in hand as well. And uh, we're done attacking. Wait, no, we're not. I mean, we're not going to get any damage in because they just bounce off and we're tapped out. Uh, but we're not blocking with Inspector because Investigator is going to always have Death Touch because the Dual Leech. Unless I take the Dual Leech, maybe we're taking the Dual Leech instead of the Investigator. That would actually be pretty annoying on this board for our opponent to deal with. Is that actually more annoying than Investigator is? I don't think so, because the clue tokens from Investigator is pretty legit. I mean, so Investigator is definitely going to draw us a lot of cards, but Dual Leech will be getting damage in that we just wouldn't be otherwise. When does this trigger? Beginning of your upkeep. Still only like two damage a turn. I take dual each. I'm still gonna take it though. Starts getting three damage a turn from Inspector, uh, four damage from Fester Leech. Vigilante. All right, three five investigators is a big deal. Inspector can block that forever, though, and now we can easily just buff the Fester Leech instead. Send in for five. Kind of like this dual leech thing. All right. Five damage it is. Or sorry, four. I'm so bad at math. Mill two lands. Those are good mills. They're down to 7, we're at 11, but we can block anything here. The Vigilante's going to be a little hard to block profitably. We'll have to like trade Dual Leech off, which I don't super want to do. I guess I can just chump with the Maverick, and that's still pretty good. Yeah, I think I'll chump with the Maverick here. Although... I mean, I get kind of demolished by a combat trick if I triple stack here. Um, but then they don't combat trick the inspector away. Unless they have specifically on the job, that'd be kind of a nightmare. But I think if they had that, they'd send in the face down too. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Go for the kill on Vigilante. They need two combat tricks or on the job to make this really bad for me. Otherwise, one combat trick is a little disappointing, and no combat tricks, I think, is just great for me. I already cast the course to kill. Oh, and I milled the island anyway. Okay. Let's take another swamp, because we've got a triple black card in here. Oh, no, we don't. We milled that, too. Milled the, all the goodies. Three mana, there's an inside source. Alright, that's very good against the dual leech. Yeah, so now... I can still make the Fester Leech a 4-4 death touch? Which I think is worth it, because if I attack in with it as a 3-3 death touch, it trades with the 1-1 one, one and the 2-2. Two, two. But now it gets to trade with... A 3-3 three, three and a 1-1? One, one. I think that's better enough to spend the counter here. Maybe it's not. I'm gonna do it. Trade with the face down and a 1-1. One, one. Uh-oh. Does this flip to still trade? That would suck. This is a dog walker. Dream pod for white. Inside source and dog walker. Wojak investigator. Rough. Alright. They've got the premium white commons. 
Extract a confession. The inspector. I have no flying blockers anymore. It's looking like game. This is a detective too, isn't it? Oh my god. Six damage in the sky, two turns in a row, and I'm dead. Or they can just buff the 2-2 two -two detective on the ground, and that's pretty nice too. I mean, we're definitely not on the aggressive anymore, so we just trade. Hmm. At least we get to be evil and kill a dog. Get your puppy out of here. But we're mega dead. I don't know if there's anything we could have done here. I do think that taking the the dual leech did play out pretty well. Well, yeah, we were never winning. The white commons are just too good, honestly. All right, that is dead to flying. Yeah. If we took investigator instead of the dual leech. I guess we probably would have gotten some clue tokens. Maybe we could have won off of clue token value, but we would have been really on the back foot there because they could have gotten so many attacks in thanks to dual leech, and we obviously wouldn't have been getting any attacks and we'd just be making not the greatest blocks from there on. Yeah, I mean, they would have had a dual leech with inside source and dog walker coming up. That is a lot of attacks that are not good for us. Yeah. I don't think there's much we could do in that one, so one and one it'll be. Here we are now for game number three, super solid keepable hand. Currently one and one, so things could go either way here. Could turn into a really good run, could turn into a really bad run. Still early to tell. Big fan of this hand to start things off though, if our opponent isn't hyper aggressive and starting with a Raucous Theater means they're probably not. But they do still hit a two drop on curve with the innocent bystander. This is five mana to flip, so we uh, are going to want to play Gardener first. Do I need to play Gardener and just trade into this? I don't think so. We've got Coerce to kill in hand. We need the blue source pretty bad. And I don't think we can afford to just play Bloomkin as a 1-1. One, one. So we're going to take some hits from the Bystander for sure. They are four color. Red, black, green, white. There's their face down turn three. All right. They are on the play with two drop into three drop here. And we're on the draw not starting till turn three. So certainly on the back foot as things progress. Can try to flip that around pretty quickly with a two for one like coerced to kill. But that means we need a blue source, which means we can't really get blocking yet. Oh. Well, that's pretty miserable. So I can kill that, but then I've got another turn of no blocking. Because then I don't have the mana to flip our face down up and get the blue source. Yeah, I mean, it may not technically be killing me, but forcing me to cast this bite down on crime instead of flipping to get my island, is not good for me. Because then I don't get to coerce to kill next turn yet. Yeah, wow. The four color deck goes two, three, four, five curve on us on the play, and that's likely enough. I mean, we get our blue source now. Play that as land for turn, I suppose. Might as well. I guess we could not do that to try to scare them a little bit. But we're still only going to have one mana up for flipping regardless. Well, two mana up. This has to be a bad face down and this game is mega over. I guess I can really hope it's a bad face down. Take five. I die to like any combat trick, but four color decks really shouldn't be like. I don't know the way <laughs> the way they've curved out here looks like they're like a combat trick kind of aggro deck, but that's not really 
doesn't make a lot of sense for four color, but it makes a lot of sense of what they've been casting, so I think I have to play around. Them like combat trick blowing us out. I mean, I guess they, they win the game with a combat trick, period. If I do this and they have a combat trick, they literally kill me. If I do this and they have a combat trick, they don't lose anything off of their board and I still go to four. And if it's a big enough combat trick, they still kill me. Yeah, I, I'm in a rock and a hard place. I can't really do anything here. We just pray. All right, it's their own nervous gardener. It is a small enough face down. To not win that fight. And they don't play anything else. Well, I've got one line here. Take the offender and pass and hope for no haste. That is no haste. Now we've got a Vengeful Creeper coming up. There's five to flip. So we can double disguise. Still have blockers up here. Hope for no haste creature. I think the only thing that would really blow us out here would be instant speed and enchantment removal for coerce to kill, but if they have that, then holding up mana doesn't even do anything. Or holding up the offender at large doesn't even do anything, because it won't block anyway if they get it back to their board. Looks like some flood for our opponent. Let's get double forest, shall we? Boom. Hold up two blockers. Pass. It's a six five trample. Which is certainly not good for me. They block here, take five, six, seven. They don't technically die yet. They have instant speed exile, that is really bad for me. They are forced into this block if they don't have the instant speed like exile on attacking creature or something. And it feels like sorcery speed removal is so much more likely than instant speed removal, and I mean they have an instant here they they were holding. I just send in the Bloomkin then? Surprise, 5-5 five, five blocker. But then I just like die to combat tricks. I, I block with the whole board and hope it's enough toughness to not die. We can choose to lose to combat tricks or we can choose to lose to instant speed removal. I mean, I guess attacking with everybody loses to both, right? Because then they block Bloomkin and combat trick us. They take 5, 6, 7, go to 1, and then kill us on the crackback. I'm just going to do that. Yeah, I mean, the only way... The only way to lethal them there is, like... Attacking with everybody and them blocking not the Bloomkin. Okay, there's the first strike combat trick. That's eight. That's nine power. Two, three, four, five, six. That's exact lethal. Here's five more toughness. Or three more toughness, so that we go to six. If they have another plus three trick, we're dead. They don't. There's the concession. Okay. Oh my god. I don't know how they flooded that hard in the end. I thought we were super dead when they curved out on us like they did. Two, three, four. Just jamming damage in. What was it? Two, three, four, five even, right? Because then they followed up with the, the offender at large. Whew. Big recovery there. Um, aided by some really unlucky draws for our opponent in the end. But I guess that makes up for some pretty lucky draws at the start of having the really good aggressive curve. Spicy, spicy game. We are 2-1 now, heading into game number 4.
Here we are on the play for game number four. We've got the Fester Leech to roll on in into the Gravestone Strider and the Nervous Gardener. Ooh. Am I get enough evidence for the Inspector here? Maybe. Not quite. That is five mana value. So, Gravestone Strider it is. Playing against green, white. Usually just a really wide board of great creatures off of white like they do in any color pair. And then just a bunch of bonkers combat tricks out of green. It's what you expect in this color pair. Alright, there's the sixth mana value for the uh, collect evidence on Vitugazi Inspector. Red, green, white. All right, all three colors. So this is just going to be a super go wide deck. That's what red, white does with some really good green tricks added to the mix, I imagine. I think Fester Leech attack in as a 4 4. That seems pretty solid. Alright, just cash and damage. I don't need to immediately get the guard off the face down. I guess, because I only have one island in the deck, maybe I do just so I don't mill it off a of Fester Leech at random. There is that chance. Alright, opponent passes the turn. That's a lot of mana. Um, Just sending these two in. They don't have the mana up to flip this into something that eats a 2-2 two -two without dying. You would flip it into like a 3-1 or a 3-2 or something. It could be the 3-2 that makes a 2-2 two -two when it dies. That would be pretty good for them. Let's get the blue source if we find Coerce to kill. I guess we already have Strider, but Strider might die. And we have literally nothing else to do with our mana, so let's leech it up. It is indeed the Dog Walker. Incredible flip card. We mill another Crawl Whip Cracker. No! You're actually great in this matchup. We get to slaughter puppies. Ah. Uh... Pulsamir, very good two for one bomb rare. Five mana for a 3 2 lifelinker and a 5 5 trample is nuts, and that's not all it does. Forces terrible blocks. They get to choose what I block the 5 5 trample with. Well, we top decked the coerce to kill. Um, but it's not even that good against Tulsimir because we only take half of the card. That's what's so good about two-for-ones that make two bodies off of one spell. I don't have the mana to coerce the kill and also buff the Fester Leech. Yeah, I don't know what I even do here. I imagine we're, we're taking half of this card. I just don't know which half. Get a 1-1 Death Touch lifelink or get rid of their trample. And they're at 10 life. I'm going to take the lifelinker. Now, if we find, like, a Vein Ripper or something to kill them in the sky, it's still only going to kill them in two hits. And the two Whip Crackers in our grave looking very sad. They would have killed a 5-5 five, five Trample now. We top ducked them at this point. Kind of wish we scooped up, like, just one copy of, like, Macabre Reconstruction. Pick up two creatures from your grave, put them to your hand. Okay, that's a good draw. If this isn't a, a Reach or a Flyer, that's going to start pinging them for one a turn, but it's also going to do some digging here right now. And find a Glint Weaver, which is huge. 
and play another black source because the triple black card want to be able to do that and faster leech in the same turn if we hit eight lands Is Glint Weaver just going to make a real big fairy snoop? Maybe. Oh no, not main deck, make your move. Ew. And now we're forced into miserable blocks. And that's probably just RIP. Now we're on... We're all in on Glint Weaver. We probably have to just make it a 6-6. Six, six. Otherwise we have no good way to block a 5-5. Five, five, which is their biggest creature. So they just start ripping our board apart, and if they have a single makeshift binding to just exile the Glint Weaver, we're we're out of here. Yep. Forced to lose our only flyer. Guess I get to kill the Tulsimir at least if they don't have a good combat trick. Whoa! Okay. Their face down's a 9-9. There's Vein Ripper. Um they're still dead to getting hit by Vein Ripper twice, so I think I want to try to Glint Weaver first, actually, to pull out Makeshift Binding from their hand if they have it. I don't know if I have the time to do that, though, because I'm taking nine from Warden a turn. If I get the Vein Ripper down, even just trumping Crowd Control Warden hits them for two. Do we just accept that we lose to Makeshift Binding so that we can try to get the kill quick with Vein Ripper? If, if they have Makeshift Binding, we Glint Weaver need to get a 5-5, five five, so we make Glint Weaver a 5-5 five five and Gravestone a 2-4. Then I Chump Crowd Control Warden, I trade into their 5-5, five five, take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go to like 4. I guess I'd gain, gain the life here, so I'd still be at like 9, but our blocks wouldn't be particularly good. And if they have the makeshift binding again, they just exile the Glint Weaver, and then I'm stuck with a 2-2 two, two, and a 2-4 to block all this, which is chump there, soak up 4 damage, take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm just going to cross my fingers and pray. I don't think... I think, like, either way, if they have the makeshift binding, they're just going to win here. Because they're going to rip almost our whole board apart and put us to, like, 5 even with the life gain from the Glint Weaver. This way we actually do have counterattacks and we drain them for life as we block and everything. If they don't have the binding, we've got a shot this way. I genuinely think if they do have the binding, we don't have a shot either way. If I play Vein Ripper next turn after having like nothing left on board, we're out of here. All right. Well, we're out of here because they did have the removal. Yeah, still put them down to 9, which is something. Well, we're at 13. Put all the counters on Fester Leech, but that's still not enough damage on the crackback. Oh, I should have played a land so I could have buffed Fester Leech. That was loose. Okay, well, that block's free, but then that's 14, 15, 16, 17 more damage. Yikes. Did I miss a land drop last turn? I think I did. I think I should have just played this. I don't remember if I did. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage still. Oh boy. Yeah, so we could have killed the Seasoned Consultants. If I played my land last turn. 5, 6, 7... Okay, another land this turn doesn't do anything. I'm at five life. I am going to gain at least four life here and be at like nine. I'm gonna be dead to just like one removal spell. But if they can't removal spell Glint Weaver, then just chumping consultant. Uh, or not consultant, chumping crowd control warden. Gives me another turn, because I take 8 here, but I'll be at 9. Okay, I mean, our only line is to chump the Warden, so... Hope for 5, chump the Warden. Goodbye, 2 unscrupulous agent. What are the odds?
Send in for the forced chump. We go to two on board. Put themselves dead to us hitting removal off the top. I don't think I have much removal left, though. I've got the plus two, plus zero, shoot a creature thing. If the, Yeah, if they don't play two blockers here, if we top deck the plus two, plus zero, and shoot a creature, then we do win. We've gotten out. Ah, uh, they do have two creatures, though. It's a Bloomkin. Don't think that's enough. Three blockers total. Block, block, block. Go to dead. We do not get there then. I'd have to go back through the turns and, and see what the math is if we do Glint Weaver first and then Vein Ripper, but I think we would have just died earlier. Even if they wouldn't have a way to kill the Vein Ripper, they could have just killed us. Maybe I'm wrong. Because they, they wouldn't have had to have sacked a creature to World Souls Rage that turn, so they would have got in for a lot there. And then I'd play a Vein Ripper with a smaller board. I think I would have still just died. But maybe. Maybe the sequencing was wrong and we could have lived somehow. Close in the end, though. They're at four life. Really close. Yeah. You got me. Game five, let's go. Here we are on the play for game five. Got the turn one Fester Leech again. Fill that grave real quick for all this uh, evidence collection. Fester Leech into the sample collector could be pretty wild. Got our blue source thanks to Topiary Panther as well as tons of evidence if we need it. Our opponent starts with a plane, strongest color in the set. Being on white here. Uh, let's just curve out, let's play the agent. Got four mana value engraved with a Loxodon on eavesdropper, which is enough for sample collector, if it's not enough for extract the confession. Keep collecting evidence and just buffing up our board. Get our 1-1s up to 2-2s two to stay relevant. It is the Boros Menace. They start with a 0-4 Defender, though, which is not what you expect out of uh, the Boros Aggro Menace. Uh, I'm just going to slam down a Sample Collector. I don't think I need to just extract that and poke for two here. Okay. Now we can get Sample Collector going, which should be pretty great. Get the Fester Leech up to 2-2 two, two stats so they can't even block it with the wall. That can keep fueling the grave for the Sample Collector, which should be phenomenal. Okay. Mill a Killer Among Us and Fairy Snoop, so we really have the evidence to kill their face down if we want to. Specifically kill that. I do want to hit land for turn pretty badly. I'm going to cycle the Panther. For another green. I guess if I do it for blue, we can extract this turn still. I think I want to just play a, a V2 Gauzy Inspector this turn. For now. Yeah, I, I want to play an Inspector this turn pretty bad. gonna juice up the collector now it doesn't die to uh, galvanize for three damage and it's less likely to get killed on blocks so we can keep getting swings in with it to buff the rest of the board yeah i can attack in and make it a four five with its own ability should be pretty nasty let's do it Now they can't double block and kill it. Sanctuary Ball blocks the Fester Leech. We go for the kill there, and we find it, and then we use the rest of our mana for a face down. Nice 5-5 five, five to flip up later.
Got a whip cracker. Just to have a party here, I guess. Maybe I should have sent everybody in and made the agent a 2-2. Two -two. But I think I'm just going to make the uh, face down a 3-3. Three -three. Okay, let's see the flips here. Ooh, if this is the 5-4 that gives something plus 2 plus 0 till end of turn, that could be super nasty. That'd be like perfect. Offender at large. Be exactly what you want here. Because then you trade into the sample collector and eat the inspector. Let's see. Uh, I'm not going to do anything if they don't do anything. Well, am I? I'm not going to play Confession and Whipcracker. I will. I'll buff the Fester Leech. Okay, it's Dog Walker. That matters less. Unless... Unless... Dog Walker Felonious Rage? Okay, that's still fine. D double Dog Walker Felonious Rage. Good lord. Alright, that deck is... Very good. I'm very, very, very happy to have been on the play with the Fester Leech um, evidence... or sample collector combo. Because uh, we could have been steamrolled by a double dog walker kind of deck. I don't know what Sanctuary Wall's doing in there, uh, but the double dog walker is terrifying. The Sanctuary Wall's interesting, because that's definitely way more defensive than offensive. So it's not something you see a lot in Boros kind of decks. Especially not the double dog walker kind. Um, what are they going to... Plus two, plus one, everybody? That doesn't even kill me. Sure. On the job, send a message, and I on the crack back. Is that the line? Nope, they're not even gonna cast it. They are going to concede, and we are three and two now, guaranteed at least an average record with this deck, which I think is pretty solid. I think the deck itself is pretty average. It's got one like pretty great rare. It has okay synergy, but not super incredible. So pretty happy with where we're at here, but. See if we can't take it any farther, get any more value, any more gems out of the event. On the play, Fester Leech to start things off. Vein Ripper as the end game with the Gardener to get another Swamp out of the deck. I like it. Um, I could Maverick first to Surveil, setting up my draws. Still think Fester Leech first is almost always right. To get the fuel in your grave for any... Um, Collect evidence we draw into. There we go. Fester Leech into Sample Collector. Cool. Let's get the Fester Leech damage in first, then Maverick, because it doesn't matter what I surveil into off of Maverick. It's going to go away when we hit them with Fester Leech. Um, I'll keep these. I'll top deck a Swamp and then mill the other one to Fester Leech. I think that's fine. Jaded Analyst from our opponent. Okay, maybe I will not mill the other to Fester Leech, but that's fine too, because we need three to get to Vein Ripper anyway. What was the awkward part here is we do want one more piece of evidence in our graveyard for the Sample Collector, so we really want to mill one non-land. Um, so I will still send in Fester Leech. If they block, then I'll have to buff and trade, but it gives me the one more evidence. All right. Not the happiest occurrence there, but I think still worth it for the uh, the evidence for the sample collector. Okay, and there's a 2-2 from our opponents. Let's drop our sample collector. Could be slightly more mana efficient playing the Nervous Gardener first, uh, but I like being able to get the attack triggers down if we need them. Oh no. They've got the two evidence in their graves. That's just straight up a 4 4 vigilance. Gross. If they get four more evidence in grave, it's a 5 5, and the rest of their board is indestructible and kind of just lose. I already can't attack into that. Not ideal. Okay, I need to Nervous Gardener to get the land for Vein Ripper next turn. 
but it can be the island, which is nice. Please, no interaction for Vein Ripper. I don't really have any bait to try to pull out their removal spells. I guess Bloomkin sort of, but that's going to be like a 4-4 maximum. That's not really going to draw removal that heavily when they have a built-in way to get a 5-5 five, five soon. Yeah, well, I guess I can force the flip here. Or a combat trick either's fine. Okay, well that's not fine. It's a really good combat trick, because it wins the combat and gives a permanent buff to their entire board. Fuss and Bother is a pretty gross card. Well, there's our hopes and our dreams. Put them right on the board, ready to be crushed. They've got nine evidence from Fuss Bother, so the 10th district here is just going to be a 6-6 six, six Vigilance and the rest of their board is indestructible. I think they can do that at instant speed if they need to. Yeah, they can. Yeah, it's going to be a 6-6, six, six, which trades into the Vein Ripper. And then I don't have a Vein Ripper anymore, which is a death sentence. Let's get some Vein Ripper life drain and hopefully do it enough times to kill them in the sky. Mistway Spy. Okay. So they get some evidence. Well, they get a clue, not evidence. They investigate. A little bit floody in here. Three to play, five to flip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana total is not enough to play plus flip, so we might as well. Hit harder. We could kill them in one more swing of Vein Ripper if they don't find a way to kill it, but if they find a way to kill Vein Ripper, then we do lose. Perimeter Enforcer. All right, that's a way to chump block it if we don't find our uh, plus two plus oh fight somebody spell. We chump and, and drain here, right? I think we do. I guess I can take eight. Seven's pretty low. It's a deck with like three creatures down. Oh, this is an indestruct. Oh my god. Yeah, that's right. Maleva's just giving everybody indestructible. So it's not even a chump. It's just a block forever. Yeesh. All right. Well, then there's... Not even anything I can really draw into. I guess we could hit our Sacrifice card, make them Sacrifice Maleva, and then Chump with Enforcer. That's our one out. Well, no, the plus two plus a... Oh, shoot, somebody can still kill Maleva also. I'm just trying to think, like, we could double block and kill Maleva later, but I don't think I have the time to do that, because it involves going to, like... Going to, like, seven life right now and probably just dying next turn. Like, if they have an on-the-drop or something, we're going to, like, three life. I don't think I have the time to try to do the double block trades next turn. Like, this gives us a nice little life pocket, too, with the drain. So we draw. Plus two, plus oh, shoot a creature. Come on. Or that. That's actually instant lethal, and I didn't even think of that. If they don't have a counter spell up here for their blue mana, then they're dead. And now I've got the three mana to pay for the counter unless they pay three. I think I'm supposed to take Perimeter Enforcer and just go for the insta lethal here instead of taking Maleva. Because Maleva is not lethal on this attack. But taking Enforcer is. They take seven, they chump my 2-2. Two -two. Well, not chump, but they kill my 2-2. Two -two. 
but then I drain them for two and they die. So go for instant lethal. <gasps> Is that not lethal? Oh my god, it's not. They go to one. Oh my god. Well, they can't kill Vein Ripper now because the ward makes them sack a creature and die. They don't have lifelink left on board because I took it. And I'm at 17 because this thing's ridiculous. <gasps> the reverse coerce to kill! A creature includes Vein Ripper, right? They gain one, kill Vein Ripper, take two, go to zero. I mean, I drew a swamp, so this is my only choice, even if it doesn't work, but I think it works. Oh my god, what a game! <laughs> that was silly. Oh my god. All right, well, that was just a bomb fest nightmare back and forth. Maleva versus Vein Ripper. Bomb v. Bomb. That was a match at WWE right there. That was stupid, stupid games of magic. Once again, crazy swingy game. I really didn't expect to win, but Vein Ripper just constantly impressing, being so much more oppressive than, uh, than I thought even when we took it. And I already knew it was really, really good, but... It is just finding victories that we've got no right getting anywhere close to. This card has single-handedly pulled this deck up to a 4-2 and two run at least as we head into round number 7. Here we are for game number 7. We've got the Vein Ripper as the finisher. The hand's a little slow here. We're basically starting turn 3 because we don't want a Bloomkin as a 2-mana 1-1. One, one. We want to get the flip value. And our opponent's on the play with a black-white deck that's curving out from turn one onward. So not playing anything till turn three could be an absolute death sentence. Luckily, we do hit at least a Rebel Belt Maverick. But that doesn't really count much. It's just a 1-1 one, one, um, that doesn't block really anywhere right now. I think I mill both of these. These are not that helpful. They're more helpful as evidence in the graveyard at this point. At least the, uh, the Snoop is. The Swamp still gets towards the Vein Ripper, but we'd really like another Forest at this point. We've already got three Swamps. Yeah, I can't block profitably anywhere, so we just take the damage. All I can do is trump a 2-2. Two -two. All right, that is nice. They didn't get to 1-2-3 curve us. And uh, Bloomkin, we don't flip till 5 mana, so we go Collector, then Bloomkin plus Question. I guess that requires another... Green? No, it doesn't, because I play it face down. Yeah, no, we play Collector. That actually curves out perfectly. To where, even if I don't hit another green source, I get to play a face down and hard hidden question next turn. That's certainly uh, better. I imagine I poke for one. There is the tiniest arguments to holding this up in case it finds a good double block, but we're not just going to trump a 2-2 um, anyway. Barb Servitor. All right. That keeps poking us for one and drawing them a card every turn. And they take one when they draw the card. That is really good value. It's an unscrupulous agent. As the draw. So, set up the Bloomkin. Kill the Phantom, double block the Gorehound. Let them draw a Servitor card. Oh, they're never going to send in the ground, all right. Yeah, maybe we double block there. I just don't want to get destroyed by, like, an Audacious something. Get destroyed by Tesa instead. Ooh, with options like these. Yeah, that's that's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, they had an instant in their hand with the way Arena was holding, so just audacious whatever for plus two, plus two, wipes our board for nothing. If we go for the double block, 
but yeah, now they get a clue off Tesa and go wild. I mean, I guess I can kill the clue if I want to just slam creatures down here instead of flipping our face down. Are they exile here? Basilica Stalker. If they have their own unscrupulous agent, I mean, they win. Yeah, maybe we should have just flipped the Bloomkin just to play around them having an unscrupulous agent. Yeah. In for a penny, in for a pound. They agent me. Oh my god, I thought that only worked when they sacked something. <laughs> well, I definitely should have just flipped up the Bloomkin then. Wow. I thought we could, like, stop them from getting the flyer by killing it, because most of the cards that trigger off clues trigger off of specifically sacrificing them. So that's just really sad. I can't really take five to stop this thing. I guess I could just take two, but then I lose uh, an actual creature with Unscrupulous Agent. Alright, they didn't have their own Unscrupulous Agent, but I also didn't hit the Vein Ripper mana. Well, we might have punted this one away. Flipping Bloomkin over playing Agent Whipcracker would have been just dramatically better. I was just like on the defensive, so I was in the defensive mindset of like we need to establish as many blockers as possible, but the fact that the Whipcracker didn't even stop them from getting another creature from Tasa is just like, alright, no, just get the mana. Just get the mana at that point. Kill my reach creature here. Could get the 3-3 three, three on the ground and then sack that instead to keep the reach. I think that's worth it. I almost sacrificed the reach creature anyway. We're actually just getting demolished by Servitor this game. I feel like I only ever run against this card when I'm not playing aggro, because aggro just demolishes this thing. But when you're not aggro, it is a big problem. Alright, show me the removal and I can scoop. No, Slice from the Shadows off the top means... We just slice the Servitor at this point. One three is already big enough for all these spirits, so let's spread the love around on an unscrupulous agent. Keep the land in case of their own unscrupulous agent. And we will slice their servitor from the shadows. Tasa's still just gonna go to Value Town and destroy us. Tasa plus Gorehound. Is Tasa actually just worse than the servitor? They're both tremendously bad for us. I guess Tasa's getting clues in drawing cards. Servitor is just drawing cards. Plus now I can actually block. I just take two a turn instead of one a turn, but I stop them from drawing. It deals combat damage to player. When it's dealt damage, I lose that much life. And this triggers off of life loss too. Yeah, wow. I guess we have to just slice Tesa. But they could save Tesa with just a plus two plus two trick. They couldn't save Servitor with a plus two plus two trick. Case file auditor, sure. Miss. No enchantment, just miss, please. They did not miss. They got a 2-1 Menace, and if I kill it, they get to search for anything they want out of their deck. That's pretty easy to solve as well. Not good. There's the case. Oh my god. Yeah, we certainly could have played this one better. The really pivotal turn being that we should have gotten the lands to play Vein Ripper sooner, but... This is insanity from our opponent.
Now we've got no choice but to go for the moment of truth. Show me the removal for Vein Ripper. If we see it, we concede on the spot. Yep. Oh, and it gets around the ward also. And they probably had it all game, so... Despite a pretty big punt of tutoring out some forests there. Oh my god, yeah, they had Extract plus Makeshift Binding? We were not going to get anywhere this game. You got me. I don't even have the mana for that. No. All right. Well, we're super dead in a million ways. All right. Well, four and three, it will be not a bad run for this deck at all. This deck certainly was not great. It was relying a lot on one really powerful rare, but when you start with a rare as powerful as Vein Ripper, you probably got to try to... Uh, latch your hooks onto that and stick to it. And that is what we did here for an average run. Anything super terrible about the deck or super good about the deck? I think it's a little bit higher on like mediocre two drops that I'd want. The agents really didn't feel very helpful. We would have preferred more defensive speed cards that matter more on blocks rather than trying to grind out a little bit of value from ripping cards out of their hand. Like I would prefer like two more extract confessions or something or two more Definitely two more whip crackers, like cards that are big enough to trade off and buy us time. There were just agents and mavericks and faster leeches. Like our creatures felt so small so often, we were often getting just still steamrolled and just rolled over by the really aggressive decks when we're sitting there playing one threes, two twos, and one ones. Um, the majority of the early game. So we could have used some beefier blockers early. I think that was the biggest thing missing from this deck. But also, better removal would have been nice. The one coerce to kill being really good. And then uh, bite down on crime, hard hitting question being fine, but not the greatest in this kind of deck. That doesn't have big creatures out that often. Um, I don't know, the removal really wasn't that bad. I think it's mainly the creatures. Bigger, better defensive bodies early in the game could have gone a long way for us. Other than that, though, like we had the finishers, Vein Ripper obviously being insane, but. Flint Weaver was fine, Vengeful Creeper was fine. Still got some work done by some of our other cards, just I think a little bit too mediocre. A little bit too many mediocre filler creatures that could have been better, bigger bodies to help defend and trade off with early. So, four and three it is. I think a perfectly reasonable record for this pretty average deck. Again, one really good Mythic Rare, but a good chunk of filler to drop it down to just an average kind of pile. So we'll take it. 1,400 gems and three packs, pretty much the break-even point. Perfectly happy with that. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.